today we are going to discuss about gear trains so gear trains so what is meant by gear trains it is a combination of gears that is used for transmitting motion from one shaft to another shaft or the combination of gears which means two or more gears are made to mesh with each other to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft the gear train is necessary when it is required either to step up or step down the speed of the driven shaft right so such a combination is called gear train or train of toothed wheels right then the speed ratio what is meant by speed ratio of gear trains so speed ratio is nothing but it is a ratio of speed of the driving gear to the driven gear the speed ratio of the gear train is the ratio of speed of the driver to the speed of the driven right so which is equal to the number of teeth on driven divided by number of teeth on driver right both are inverse so speed of driver divided by speed of driven which is equal to number of teeth on driven divided by number of teeth on driver right now train value what is meant by train value train value is nothing but it is the ratio of speed of driven to the speed of driver or in terms of other words it's a reciprocal of speed ratio what we discussed in our previous slide right so the speed ratio of i mean the reciprocal of speed ratio is known as this train value so train value which is equal to 1 by speed ratio okay so here the speed speed of driven divided by speed of driver which is equal to number of teeth on driver divided by number of teeth on driven right both are inverse right now now the gear train is majorly divided into two category one is ordinary gear train another one is epicyclic gear train right so this ordinary gear train is divided into subdivision of subdivided into two category one is simple gear train another one is compound gear train this epicyclic gear train is subdivided into two category one is simple epicyclic gear train and compound epicyclic gear train right again this compound gear train is subdivided into two category one is reverted gear train and non reverted gear train okay so let us discuss one by one what is what okay now this is these four gear trains i mean simple gear train compound gear train reverted gear train and epicyclic gear train so most of the syllabus it covers this simple compound reverted and epicyclic gear train right so what is the major purpose we need to step up or step down right either these two purpose we can use this gear trains so where we are using this gear trains so widely used in modern machines like automobiles clocks even watches also people they are using these gear trains so these are the applications of gear trains right now let us discuss about simple gear train what is simple gear train when there is only one gear in each shaft then it is known as a simple gear train right see the picture this is shaft 1 and this is shaft shaft 2 and the shaft 1 it carries only one gear this is gear 1 and shaft 2 it carries one gear this is gear 2 right see the definition when there is only one gear in each shaft so the shaft 1 it carries only one gear and shaft 2 it carries one more another gear right see these two gears are meshed with each other to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft right this is input and this is output right so we can give input in this and we can get output from this shaft right so each gear it carries only one gear then it is called as a simple gear train right see here this is shaft 1 shaft 2 and shaft 3 right so this is gear 1 gear 2 and gear 3 so we can give input here and we can get output from shaft 3 right so this is intermediate gear 
what is the purpose of intermediate gear so before that see for example the driver it rotates in clockwise direction then what about the driven we can get output in the opposite direction if the two gears are meshed with each other suppose three gears are there the gear one is meshed with gear two and gear two is meshed with gear three right so gear one it rotates clockwise direction then gear two it rotates anti clockwise then gear three it rotates clockwise direction right so what is the purpose of intermediate gear to change the direction so for that we are using this intermediate gear right whereas see here in this example four gears are there but each shaft it carries only one gear shaft one shaft two shaft three and shaft four so each shaft it carries only one gear this is gear one gear two gear three and gear four right so these type of combinations are called as a simple gear train then how to calculate the speed ratio for simple gear train already we discussed speed ratio which is equal to speed of driver divided by speed of driven which is equal to number of teeth on driven divided by number of teeth on driver see take for example n1 as a driver n2 speed of n1 which is mean which means the speed of the driver and this is speed of the driven right and which is equal to the number of teeth on driven divided by number of teeth on driver right so similarly we can calculate the train value for the same case train value which is equal to 1 by speed ratio right or speed of driven divided by speed of driver which is equal to number of teeth on driver divided by number of teeth on driven so n2 divided by n1 which is equal to t1 by t2 this is train value see for example train value which is equal to 1 by speed ratio so which is equal to 1 by n1 divided by n2 which is equal to n2 divided by n1 clear which is equal to t uh, t1 divided by t2 okay next compound gear train what is mean by compound gear train compound gear train when there are more than one gear on a shaft then it is called as a compound gear train when two gears are fixed on the same shaft then the gears are called as or the, then the gears form a compound gear compound gear gear train a gear train having one or more compound gear train uh, uh, gears is known as compound gear train so compound gear which means when two gears are fixed on the same shaft then the gears forms a compound gears right a gear train having one or more compound gears is known as compound gear trains right see here this is shaft 1 and this is shaft 2 shaft 3 and shaft 4 see the shaft 1 it carries only one gear right here they are giving the name a b c d a which is called as shaft 1 and b is shaft 2 c is shaft 3 and d is shaft 4 clear so the shaft 1 it carries only one gear that is gear 1 and shaft 2 it carries two gears gear 2 and gear 3 whereas shaft 3 it carries two gears gear 4 and gear 5 the shaft 4 it carries only one gear such type of combinations are called as compound gear train right see the gear driver it rotates in clockwise direction see the gear 1 is meshed with gear 2 and gear 2 and gear 3 both are in the same shaft and gear 3 is meshed with gear 4 and gear 4 gear 5 both are in the shaft 3 then the gear 5 is meshed with gear 6 right so how the power is transmitted from gear 1 to gear 6 so the power transmitted from gear 1 to gear 2 and gear 3 3 gear 3 to gear 4 and gear 5 to gear 6 right the speed of gear 1 is different and speed of gear 2 is different whereas speed of gear 2 and speed of gear 3 both are in the same speed because both are in the same shaft and gear 3 and gear 4 are different speeds and for gear 4 and gear 5 both are the same speed because gear 4 and gear 5 both are in the same shaft s3 shaft right then 
the gear 5 speed of gear 5 and speed of gear 6 both are different clear now how to calculate the speed ratio for this speed ratio which is equal to we know that the speed of driven divided by i mean the speed of driver divided by the speed of driven or the follow year right which is equal to the name the product of i mean the product of number of teeth on driven divided by driver see n1 which is equal to driver and n2 which is equal to driven so n1 by n2 which is equal to n3 by n4 into n5 by n6 which is equal to t2 by t1 t4 by t3 and t6 by t5 right see n1 n2 n1 will carries in a single shaft whereas n2 and n3 both are in the same shaft so speed of n2 and speed of n3 both are same right so it became cancelled or oh, now n4 n5 n4 n4 and n5 both are in the same shaft right so this is also cancelled so finally n1 by n6 see n1 by n6 which is equal to t2 by t1 into t4 by t3 into t6 by t5 right so in the numerator t2 t4 t6 and denominator t1 t3 t5 right so train value which is equal to we know that 1 by speed ratio right now we are going to solve a simple problem for compound gear trains right then only we can able to understand clearly right read the problem the gearing of a machine tool motor shaft is connected to a gear a and rotates at 975 rpm the gear b c d and e are fixed to parallel shaft rotating together the final gear f is fixed on the output shaft what is the speed of the gear f so here the given the name of the gear a b c d e f and the number of teeth are also given and see gear a is meshed with gear b and gear b gear c both are in the same shaft then gear c is meshed with gear d and gear d and gear e both are in the same shaft and gear e is meshed with gear f right we need to calculate f right so this is speed of n1 and this is speed of n6 so this is n2 n3 n4 n5 and this is n6 so already we discussed n by n1 by n6 which is equal to what how to expand this so n1 by n2 because n a and n b right so n a and n b n b is so here n c and n e right similarly we have to expand this these are the solutions and the speed ratio we know that speed of driver divided by speed of driven which is equal to the product of the number of teeth on dri driven divided by number of teeth on driver right see here n a by n f because we have six gears a b c d e and f we need to calculate the speed of f right a is a single gear a is meshed with b and b and c are in the same shaft c is meshed with mesh with d and d and e are in the same shaft and e is meshed with f right clear now so finally we got n a by n f which is equal to t b into t d into t f divided by t a t c t e right so substitute all the values and finally you got 18.75 which is equal to n a divided by n f we know the value of n a then n f which is equal to n a divided by this value which is equal to 52 rpm right is a final value thank you